Oh, well, hello, old friend. I don't know if I have the energy for you today or not. Well, let's get to it, I suppose. Welcome back to Good Dreams Off-Road Adventures and welcome to what is officially day two and part two of the Ford Excursion Front Suspension Bushing Project. Yeah. Anyway, well, let me catch you up on what we were able to get accomplished this morning. Well, as you can tell, I now have the driver's side bushing in. You know, yesterday it took me about six hours to get the old bushing out and then to get the new bushing in after I figured out and decided what it was you're supposed to do with the new bushings. Uh, so I learned a lot and was able to do this one, take it out and put it back in. It only took me an hour and a half. So that is a huge improvement. I'll just run through real quick on how I managed to uh, go ahead and do this. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. It's just the way that I found that ended up working for the tools that I have and, you know, what worked for me to get it done. So to get the old bushing out, what I first did is I took a torch to the inner sleeve with the hopes that it would loosen the adhesive that uh, glued it to the inside of the old bushing. And then I used the, oh, the big, this thing, ball joint press. Used a ball joint press to push the old bushing all the way out the backside, no issues there. Then I took a hole saw drill. I don't know, it's laying around here somewhere. Anyway, a hole saw drill bit. Actually used that to drill out the entire bushing in, it came out in chunks of course, but it worked great. Then I used a wire wheel and another wire, wire wheel. Cleaned out the hole that that goes in. Then I luby doobied up the, um, you know, the new bushings. Pressed the backside in first. That was the one that I was, you know, having issues with all day yesterday. Pushed the back one in first, went in, no problems. Then I pushed the outside, you know, the one you can see, I pushed that one in again, no problems. And then I went ahead and pushed the sleeve in, ended up using, ended up having to use the ball joint press to push that sleeve in just so that way it went in. And anyway, you can see it's done and ready to go. But I'm not going to put this up in its place just yet on either side. And let me tell you why. So yesterday I made the decision to not do the other bushings that are on the actual pivot arm that, uh, you know, where it mounts the I-beams under the engine, under the cross member of the frame. I dropped one, decided it looked pretty good. And after fighting with the uh, bushing for six hours, just that one bushing, I decided it wasn't worth the time to do it. But since that one this morning only took me about an hour and a half, I've had a little bit of a change of heart and we're gonna go ahead and do them. So why don't you hang out with me again, part two or day two, put these in and we'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be just fine. No, no, I'm sure we're gonna end up with a third part to this video. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna get into the, oh, those are bright lights right in the eyeball. All right, we're gonna get into the pivot arm here, I guess that's what it's called. Um, you've got a bolt nut, and I would love to use an impact here. However, um, you know, I've got a, on this side, which is fine, I wouldn't put it on this side anyway, but I've got an oil pan and an oil filter. And on this side, well, I've got the frame. So an impact, not usable. The head of the bolt on the back side is 18 millimeters. The nut here is 21 millimeters. And I already know what this is like to drop because I already did it yesterday. So we're just going to go ahead and do it again. And oddly, these don't put up a whole lot of fight. So I guess that's good. And, um, you know, speaking of yesterday, 
I know I mentioned I wasn't going to do it because they looked fine. I didn't drop this other one here. I only dropped this one. And this one may have looked okay, but I'm looking in at this one. And, well, there's not a lot of bushing. There's not a lot of rubber left in there. It's just it's smashed down. So we're probably very much doing the right thing here. At least there's enough room to throw the ratchet. You know, it's a decent swing, almost a quarter of a swing. So it's not too bad. It is a long bolt, but they are coarse threads. I think that's enough. There we go. Get the nut off. Lovely. Okay, don't need that anymore. And I think it just slides pretty much right out. Almost. Come on, baby. Let go. Oh, you know, I probably should have put something on the back end to support, you know, the back end. Let me go think about doing that real quick. Well, I couldn't really find anything to uh, rig up the back end of that. So I just use some zip ties to hold the rear part of that arm up while I'd work on this. That's fine. Now I just need to get this bolt out. Ah! Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. I would, except I'm blind, so I have to use wear my regular glasses. I just want the bolt out. That's all I want. We'll just shake it. Oh, got it. Oh, it wanted to go up. Okay, well, there's the bolt. Well, that's as dropped as that's gonna get. Can I push it out? Yeah. See, what makes this one difficult, is you can see this piece right here, it wraps around the pivot joint so it can't just come you have to push it out it can't come straight down this one over here it can come straight down this one over here not so much but I need it to rotate a bit so I can get at it there we go I need it to tilt like that too. There you can see. Well, maybe I can just sneak it under there like this. And then I can work on it like that. Yeah, that might actually do. Okay, now we gotta get this bushing out. Yep. Okay. Okay, just to get reorientated, this is the bushing here in the arm we gotta pull out. I think this white filter is reflecting a whole bunch of light so what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to heat up this inner sleeve to see if it'll soften that adhesive there and try not to start a fire while i'm doing it that'd be nice okay Yep. And I'm being careful not to heat up the arm itself because, well, stamped in the arm it says do not heat, bend, or weld. Okay. I see some rubbers catching fire. That's not what I want. That's okay. Let's get this sleeve hot and hopefully it will, hopefully it'll soften up the adhesives. Okay, get this out of here. I don't know if that's enough or not. Oh, and I'm stuck under something. Okay, that's groovy. 
All right. Sorry for the noise. Now I'm going to use this thing that weighs 8,000 tons. And I'm just going to set it on the back side and get this thing run in and just push that sleeve on through. And again, I'm sure this isn't the right way, and I'm sure there are many better ways to do this, but these are the tools I have, and this is the way we're doing it. So I'm curious if anybody watching has done this before or not. How did it go for you? The struggle with this press is that it weighs 8,000 pounds, you know. little impact. I'm not using the big one. I'm just using the little three eighths impact and let's do it. Looks like it's working. sleeve came out. Here it is. Here's the sleeve. Yep. So the sleeve did come out. Maybe we just burn the bushing out. Nope. That's a bad idea. Where'd my screwdriver go? There it is. Well, I guess let's just see. I mean, it kind of works. No, not really. There's a chunk. Why does that feel like metal? Is there a bushing within the bushing? What in the world? Because that, that looks like metal. That looks like a second metal sleeve right there. And then there's another metal sleeve. What in the world? Yeah, that's two sleeves. That is interesting. I'm wondering if I need to get a drill bit into this and let it run around, if it will, and get this rubber out. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, if the camera can focus on it or not, but it looks like you have an inner an inner inner like there's two layers to this bushing okay I don't know what to do next okay let's see what this does of course I'm using cheap Harbor Freight bits that are probably going to break problem I'm having is I can't see I'm wearing bifocals and neither one of them at this distance allow me to see anything hold on okay now with a different pair of glasses Let's see if this gets any better Maybe a socket 
ball joint press adapters on the back side maybe I don't know need to stop laying here and actually do a thing I feel like I'm on the verge of just dropping everything. Okay. I think I have it all lined up now. Well. I guess there's nothing to do but just to go do it. Let's see if the 3 8 will do it. I don't really want to get the big one out if I don't have to. Well, this is working. Unfortunately, I do think I'm going to have to use the big one because this is really struggling to push that through. Although it's doing it, it is doing it. Keep going or grab the big one and make it quick. Well, considering that my arm, it really hurts. I think I'm just gonna keep going with this one. and this is what I'm talking about if you can see that look at that there was an inner sleeve in there oh, Ford why do you hate me so much and now I've got this thing just kind of stuck in there it's even good the rest of the way out yes Sometimes, if you listen really carefully, you can hear my genius. I just have to clean it, is all. How do we clean it? I don't know. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Now you can see what I'm talking about. I've got all that out, but now I just need to clean the rubber out. Got a huge chunk of it out. This is definitely kind of working. I think this is well noted for the other side. When we go to push it out, I think doing some drilling and then using a socket to push the whole thing out at once will get all of it instead of getting it in pieces like that. Okay. I gotta find a wider wheel, because I can't find nothing down here. Can't see anything. Glasses are getting knocked off. Dang it. Ow. You know, one of these days it would be really cool if I could get a shop that's tall enough that I could then get a lift in it. That would be fantastic. No holding the breath on that, but that, how, tell me how fantastic that would be. Yes, okay. Can I speed the drill up? Or is that just gonna make a mess? Yeah, here we go, buddy. Let's get it, yeah. Speed and power solves many things. Ah, that looks
looks good. That looks real good. Okay. What's next? I don't know. Well, I do know. Next is we put bushings back in here. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here I come again. So here we have the new bushing stack lubed up and ready to go. You'll notice that the end cap isn't on here. It's because all of this has to shove through and then we put it on and then we can install it. So what I don't know is how easy is this going to go through. So let's find out. Probably snug. Although I just got it started by hand, shockingly. Okay, well, I've got it a good ways through by hand, which is helpful because now it won't be so hard to get on in my mind. Okay, now what? Do I do something like, oh, the light's going dead. I guess I need to go get a new light and then use the press push it in. That's probably the way I should be doing it. Let me go find the other adapter. Oh, the other adapter's right there. Let me change the light and go get the other adapter and see if I can figure out how to set this up. Okay, let's go. It's going in. It's not really too difficult. That's nice. I could use a win, although nothing has really gone wrong today. except this bushing went in crooked. It's all right, we can move it. Move the clamp to the part that didn't go in. There we go. There we go. Nice and even. looks kind of good. It's not even on the back, which I think I've got a steel plate around here somewhere that helped me even that up because these adapters aren't flat. I just need to find my steel plate that's around here somewhere. Perhaps if I call it by name. Steel plate! Steel plate! Oh, there it is. Look, it worked. Okay. Steel clamp, or still, still, there we go. And let's just make sure this is on the sleeve directly. Here we go. Okay, let's feel around it. Is that good enough? I don't know. I don't want to say good enough. I mean, Granted, when it goes up into the hole and gets bolted in, I'm, I'm sure that, yeah, see the backside is actually flush, the sleeve. This is probably enough to get it up in there. Once it's in the hole and clamped together with bolt, I'm certain this will be just fine. Okay, I think the camera battery is almost dead, so I'm going to crawl out from under here, put a new battery in the camera move the camera, and then we'll put this thing back in its home, which is up here. Sure. Now, we just need to put this in its, in its place. We put tools where I can reach them. That'll be a good idea. Ratchet, breaker bar. I'm not sure how much you all can see, but this is you know, it's not really lined up, and that's okay. So, ah, this light's right in my face. It's right in, right in, can we move it? Sure, okay. So, I'm gonna have to push this back. 
Did that move you? You good still? Okay. It's going to move you in a minute, I think. Okay. Groovy. Now, push it up and pull it back in. It's snug. Oh, I just bumped you. Sorry. Oh, it's only snug because of that bolt right there. Come on, baby. Oh, sorry. Just keep bumping you. Don't worry about it. Okay, how do I get it in this way? Maybe I need to go out there and give it a shove? I don't know. Maybe jack it up a little bit. Probably some of that. Let's go do some of that. So how's your Super Bowl Sunday going? Mine's been fantastic because I've been under the excursion all day. Yep. So I was getting a little frustrated under the car there and the camera, there was just no room. I kept knocking it over, trying to get, you know, that pivot arm back into the place where it goes to put the bolt in it. Anyway, I ended up using a ratchet strap, a heavy ratchet strap, a couple of pry bars, a few swear words, probably more than a few. And uh, eventually I was able to get that thing back in there. And let me tell you, it was a fight. But anyway, the next one, I've already got the bushing out, got it cleaned. New bushing is in, it's ready to go. Um, this one should be a little easier, and I think I'll go ahead and get you under there with me when we go ahead and put this one back in its, you know, in its place where it lives. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to work the jack on the other side, and what you're going to watch for is the arm, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's there, and it's going to go in here. Then we'll put a bolt in it, and uh, we'll all be happy. Sure. And you can tell that that has lost some of its alignment, which is okay because we can move it probably. Let it down a little bit first. Hmm. There we go. With any luck, this might just go in there. Look at that, just sliding right in. I wish the other one went so easy, but it, alas, didn't even come close to going this easy. Okay, a little bit more maybe. Let's leave it there and see how close we are. Pretty close, just needs to go up a bit. So some of the issue with the other one is that it couldn't just go straight up. It had a plate around the bottom and that plate meant it had to go in from the end and it was really difficult. And I wanted to spare you all from all the swear words. So I decided to shut the camera off, do it off camera. And if this one was gonna cooperate, maybe we'll show you this one. So I'm going to use this tool here. I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to use this and kind of shove in the hole and see if it can help to guide it to line it up. It's a little long. There we go. There we go. That might, hell, that might just be it. Let's see if the bolts will go in. from the front. How did this one go? Um, the bolt. How did this one go? I don't remember now. I think the bolt went from the front. Yeah, because Yeah, because I held it on this end with the breaker bar and this end I actually ended up using impact to get this one off. It was a little argumentative. And this isn't exactly lined up just yet. 
It sure did come out easy though. Do I need to whack it? Okay. Let's whack. Oh, can I whack it? That's the question. Well, it didn't take a lot of convincing. That just went right in there. All right, let's start the nut. Okay, now like I said, I did use the impact to get this one off. I feel like I need to lower this a little bit. Let me lower this arm a little bit. Okay, if I lower this arm, it'll give me a little bit more room to get to that bolt. Don't mind that, that's just the spring coming apart. It's a normal, normal sounds, okay. Okay, now I can get behind it with an impact that has an extension that has a wobbly thing. It's got a bendy bit on it, you know? And let's get the breaker bar on here to hold this in and let's run it. That's it. That, I'm glad I saved the easy one for last because I didn't want the hard one to be last. Well, as you can tell, I didn't quite finish on the excursion today. You know, I'm about 17 and a half or so hours into this thing in two days and, uh, you know, two parts. And, well, we still got to put it back together. So, I guess next time on part three, yeah, this is getting kind of long. Day three, part three. You know, we've got to uh, put the rear parts of the radius arms back up to the frame. Hopefully that doesn't uh, go too badly. And then put the new shocks on, reattach the springs to the frame, put the new sway bar end links on, um, put the brake calipers back on, um, put the front wheels back on, torque those, check all the tire pressures, check the torque on the rear tires. Because like I mentioned at the beginning of all of this, you know, those tires are about a week old and I just don't trust a tire shop to do the torques and air pressures the way they're supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. In the meantime, stick around for part three coming soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye now.